Hello and welcome back to video three of the Fullerton College Prepress class, PIA, Prepress Training Handbook, Section 4.2, Color Reproduction Lecture by Professor Ben Hewitt. Hello, and that was a mouthful. So, requirement number three. We last left off, we talked about uh, tone reproduction and gray balance as two ways of keeping in your images controlled from the original to the final output. Here, let's go back and look at them just for a second here. Tone is about the light to darkness levels of the various parts, the light, the middle, and the dark parts of your image. And gray balance is trying to make sure that in practice, C plus M plus Y does equal K as it does in theory, trying to force theory onto practice. And you know what? That actually is a good way of controlling things. If your gray balance is neutral, if C plus M plus Y does equal K, then you get yourself a nice image, which does not lean to any one of the colors. It doesn't have a color cast, as we call it. So requirement number three is color correction. And this is one of the ones that takes us back out of the scientific technical aspect of trying to make things accurate and brings it back to the fact that printing is in fact a business. And in the end, nothing we do is worth doing if we're not doing it for someone else. If we're trying to create somebody else's book. Printers sometimes get to make their own books and make their own artwork, but typically in industry, you're producing somebody else's work. And in this case, it's up to them. The client has the final word. If that color is a little too blue, even if it's technically correct, even if numerically speaking, and you measure the LED values and they're all correct, if the client wants it more blue and they're gonna pay for it, you know, it's one of those skills in life to learn to bite your tongue, to learn to give good advice, but to give it as advice and give it gently and um, diplomatically. And, uh, with good politic. Uh, but anyways, in the end, we, we bite our tongues and we do as they ask because they're the ones signing the check. And uh, the hand that holds the pen that signs the check gets to, is also the same hand that signs off on if they like the print job or not. So we do have to create what they want. And um, whether or not it's technically correct, if it's what, what they're looking for, it's what they're looking for. So long as it's reasonable, something you can actually do. Anyways. Remember that the art of diplomacy is the art of telling someone to go to hell and getting them to look forward to the trip. That's a, a quote from a friend of mine anyways. Uh, but um, yes, uh, we need to find a way of communicating what the truth is, but still allow for their own choices. You can advise that something is technically correct, but if they really prefer it to be more one color than another, well, you kind of need to go with that. And this involves actually fussing with the image itself and not messing with tone reproduction or gray balance because tone reproduction and gray balance are press considerations. Both of those are things you can adjust on how your plates are being output. But if that blue wants to be more blue, well then that's not something you do on press because that'll affect everything else. If you adjust the whole printing press and your plates and stuff so that that blue in that image looks a little bit less blue because it was too intense or the other way around, if, if the colors are too bright and you wanted to desaturate it, if you desaturate an entire press run based off of one image, the rest of the book is also gonna have the same things done to it. You need to correct that image individually. And that's color correction in an image, which we're less concerned about in this course. That's typically normally handled between the photographer and the artist and the client, um, but sometimes we're involved too. Let's talk about the black separation. So remember, and not remember, we're used to seeing photographs where the images have this intensity, this density, this richness of color. Even if you're talking about developed film, uh, not necessarily even digital photographs on computers and cell phones, and especially, woo, especially digital photography seen on a cell phone screen, which is optimized for cell phone screen viewing. My goodness, that's really hard to reproduce outside of it. Also, typically those images aren't that good. They're just optimized for that environment to make it seem better than it is. The colors are all more intense and brighter and the contrast is extreme because hopefully it's logical and obvious to you guys at this point that the amount of contrast you can have between black and white on a screen that is black when it's turned off and is bright white light when pointed at your face is a much higher dynamic range of gamma if you're used to computer game adjustments or TV adjustments and a much higher gamma uh, difference between what you're gonna get between a sheet of paper that has black ink 
on it. The darks are gonna be darker and the light's gonna be lighter. And most importantly, the difference between the dark and the light is gonna be way more intense. When you're using printing inks on paper, we've compressed the tonal range to be a much smaller amount of how much how dark we can go and how bright we can go. How bright we can go is limited by the paper itself. And how dark we can go is limited by how dense our inks are. Especially when you're talking CMY, while C plus N plus Y should equal K, C plus N plus Y approaches but never reaches K. It's an exponential de de decay function. If you're going to graph it out, you can get really close, but you can never get all the way there, which is why we need that black. It has to be added to get more density and to make it look more dynamic of an image than you're going to get just trying to mix the three primaries. So we create it. There's two ways of generating this. Uh, the basic way, uh, UCR, not UC Riverside, sorry guys, it's a different UCR, under color removal and gray component replacement, GCR. GCR is more common these days. It's something you need, it's harder to understand. So we're gonna look at this and what it does. Uh, remember from your projects that any place where you're getting darkness in all three channels, red, green, and blue of an RGB image, that's where black should also be added. But how much and how much can you? Those are the questions we're gonna investigate here. I originally intended to do only three videos, but if we end up in a fourth video, my apologies, mm -hmm. this is gonna get a little technical, but important. So under color removal, UCR reduces the amount of colored inks where black ink is already present. So anywhere in the image, it was dark enough to warrant black in its own right. If the image has a dark area, like remember that bridge picture from two videos ago, if you see that bridge or yeah, that picture of that bridge, and there's an area that looks black in it, it looks black in all three channels, meaning there's no color, no light being reflected. So that's an obvious choice of a black, like in this picture here, where you see the sunglasses, obviously it's gonna be dark. So you're gonna need black ink there. And also some of the shadows on the guy's hand in other places, you add black. UCR says, you know, if we're gonna print black here, we don't need to print the other colors behind it because the black's gonna overpower it anyways, mostly. So you rem remove some of that. We haven't talked about this yet, but why do you remove that extra color? Why do you not just print the black on top and have all four colors? Because that would be the most intense color with the deepest, richest result, right? Right, it would be. However, there's a limit to how much ink you can put on paper. It varies from press to press, ink type to ink type and paper type to paper type. But uh, as my uh, lab aide on campus, Rita likes to say, paper has a melting point. I like her way of thinking about it. But really, I think about those, maybe I'll post a commercial onto our thing so you can understand this. All those commercials for, um, what do you call them? Paper towels, kitchen towels, are you gonna, disposable paper kitchen towels, right? Yeah, uh, Bounty, it, so, it soaks up more liquid without disintegrating. They always have the brand X or store brand or other brands where you get the same spill and disintegrating into pulp instead of absorbing that spilled spaghetti sauce or that blue liquid, it's always blue. Well, that characteristic of paper is true of paper, not just of um, not just of kitchen towels, but they're thinner and more absorbent, so you're going to see it there first on napkins and paper towels. That's true of all paper. You can only put so much liquid on paper before it turns into a spit wad instead of a sheet of paper with ink on it. At some point, the paper soaks up so much ink that it just becomes a mushy mess and stops being paper. In the same way that at some point you get enough rain, well, who am I kidding? We're in California. What's rain? Uh, we get enough rain. At first, if it's a light rain, you get kind of damp soil and damp dirt. We get enough rain, you got yourself mud. Same way here, you turn the paper into mud, into pulp, into spit wad if you put too much ink on it. Therefore, we try to limit the amount of ink typically to about 320%. I know that sounds silly because you only have 100% of something. That means that the most darkest color you could print should be 100% of C, M, and Y and only 20% black so to speak. That means you can have 100% of three tones and 20% of the fourth tone or any ratio that adds up to 320. A full 400% print would disintegrate the paper. As seen on the previous two slides, 100% CMYK, the richest color, it's called registration in your swatches on your computer. And we'll talk about that another time. But 
Cliff Notes version is called registration because it's meant for lining them up, not because you should ever use it for anything more than a tiny crosshair, because that's too much ink. 400% ink coverage will ruin most, pre most papers. <clears throat> the other version is called gray component replacement, GCR. GCR plays with color theory a little more to save on ink, save on time, save on money, and to make the process a little bit more stable. We're gonna pause for a second here. So unlike UCR, which just removes extra ink from behind black where black was going to be anyways, GCR is more aggressive and finds a way of replacing some of the other colors with black ink. We'll go over how and why in just a minute here. Oh, how time flies. Here we are, trichromatic colors. Trichromatic is one of those million dollar words. It's a really fun to say and makes you sound smart. But trichromatic means you are using all three of the primaries to mix it. So if a color consists of cyan, magenta, and yellow, that makes it trichromatic. Tri means three, chromatic is color, so three colored colors. Now, there's something we call the gray component. The gray or graying component of this is equal to the part that all three take up. So in this chart here, this trichromatic red, which is 75, sorry, let's start with, I, I should always start with cyan, that's, that's how it goes. 20% cyan, 75 magenta, 75 yellow, and no black. Now, because cyan plus magenta plus yellow equals black, that means that 20% cyan, in essence, cancels out, neutralizes, grays out, turns to gray, 20% of that yellow and 20% of the magenta. So this tertiary color in GCR being the, uh, the cyan there can be reduced and replaced with black because C plus M plus Y equals black equals K. Why not replace C M Y with K? It's a little bit of a magical thinking and it mostly works, but not always. So if you do full GCR, 100% GCR, meaning you are getting rid of all of that tertiary color. Sorry, my dogs are barking at nothing in the backyard there. It's their favorite activity if you hear the woof, woof, woofing going on. Anyways, so full, 100%, full GCR. I know there's a lot of percentages going on here. For that same color you're looking at means you are going to reduce all of those colors by 20% and replace it with 20% black. Because it's saying here in the bottom, basically 20% of that color was gray anyways, right? Because the cyan, magenta, and yellow makes black. Why not reduce all the colors you're using it and replace it with black instead? It should, it should be about the same. It's not exactly really the same, but it's, it's a way of doing things. It's similar to the magical thinking you have as a kid when you're learning about diets and food groups and stuff. And you're like, well, you got to have your grains, your vegetables, your fruit, and your protein, right? Well, there's pizza. It's on a bready. It's got its, uh, the dough, I forgot what it's called, man. The crust, the pizza crust. That's your breads. You've got your fruits and your tomato sauce. That's that's this red sauce. Tomatoes are fruits. So you got your fruits there. You got your vegetables. That's that's like the bell pepper sliced onto it. Sure. And then you also have uh, meat or some other sort of protein on top and your dairy. You got everything. Isn't that great? All your food groups are present right there on your pizza. That makes a health food, doesn't it? Or does it? But you don't have to go the full way. You could do partial GCR, and this is often the better way to do things if you're going to be using GCR. So partial, say 50% here, means you're looking at the fact that, again, in the same color, 20% uh, cyan means that 20% of the magenta and yellow are also going to be kind of tied up into making the grayish part of the color, the gray component of the finished color. But sometimes that trichromaticness of that color gives the color its personality and gives it its depth. And if you were to take away cyan and replace it with black or reduce the other ones, you're not gonna get exactly the same thing. You're gonna get something that's a little bit different. In fact, we're going to pause here. I'll come back on another video. We'll actually include some demonstration on this because I think it's important to actually see this as the results and not just charts. <laughs> 